Wednesday, August 7th, quick one up video for you wonderful ladies and gentlemen. A crappy treasury auction took the market down pretty hard today after the morning pop. I'll tell you, up opens tend to get sold when you're in a little bit of a down market and traders who play long intraday don't really wanna go home long because they don't know what the next day holds. I have mentioned before, once you get a big VIX pop like that to 65, volatility tends to remain elevated. I'm pretty sure the yen carry trade is probably still unwinding and I'm also sure that a lot of people got caught short volatility with that spike and their carnage is probably still playing out with margin calls. I'm not so sure when that'll run its course but I don't think it's going to take that long. As far as the ES and the NQ go, we had underwater closes today while price came down toward the end of the day, value did not. It's still hovering around 52.92. Anything below 52.79 half still remains suspect, but I do believe that 52.79 half to 52.92 is the must clear. I had warned today near the high of day that the 200 MA 30 minute needed to clear. It did for like a second and then it stalled. There was no confirmation there. If we were to clear there, we could have gone to 54.39 and maybe even up to the 5500 level. Now it seems we may get a retest of the 5120. If that area fails, we could, I was looking at end ranges, assuming we did have another leg lower, and I'm not assuming that, we could wind up at 4,800 if the 5,000-ish area doesn't hold. As far as the Qs go, similar situation. We basically had a overshoot of the 2.618 of the range. We stalled just a little bit over the two times range, the 2.618 being at 17,691, and the two times range at 18,468 quarter. Underwater close today, makes sense. We'd probably get up to, to repair at 18,289, which oddly enough lines up with the level that needs to clear. So the VWAP and the breakout level are simpatico. We did spend some time over it, but once we got back below there, it was just lights out. If the bulls can't hold and do lose the 17,362 half, uh, it's possible we make our way, believe it or not, all the way down to 15,656, but I'm not again assuming in ranges, but that would be the 4.236 of the range. So it has to be something to consider. As far as SPY goes, we stalled at the 100 MA again. That's where we had broken down from. So we basically filled in the gap from A2 and pulling back. We haven't retested the lows, but I'll keep it super simple. Bulls need to get up over and stay up over the 100 MA at 529.39, and if they can do that, maybe the world's their oyster up to 543s, which is the 50 MA, and also the gap fill from back on 81. If we do keep going lower and we can't hold the 510s, the 200 MA is currently at 500, and a retest of the full range low from 419 could take you to 494, and maybe even an overshoot to the 2.618 of the range at 491.15. After that, you're looking at 479s and 480s, which I think would be some very key support and probably an area to sell lower strikes. So if you're doing some kind of a hedge, I think you could use 480, or if you wanna use 490 as a lower strike, either one of those is fine. As far as the cues go, I was surprised they weren't doomed out of the gate after that super micro bomb. They were just awful. That's now, I think, the second or third quarter in a row that they've muffed. That on the heels of ASML being disappointing, so it's really up to NVIDIA. If any one of those will shine, it probably would be NVIDIA. I like the idea that there is a little bit of fear building there. It had been up a lot today, and then it kind of closed weak with the rest of the market. Bulls in the queues basically need to hold the 200 MA here at 430.65. If they can't hold that, the 423.45 reference low that we saw on 8.5 would likely be retested. If that fails, we're looking at 408s, 400s, and maybe even a move all the way back down to the 387.98 where the breakout really took place from. So if you want to do some kind of a put spread, I think you could use those 387s or 388s as a good strong lower strike, particularly if you're going longer dated into October or something along those lines. As far as NVIDIA goes, it is chopping around here. The bulls do need to get over the 100 MA here at 104.82. If not, it does get a little dicey. If we were to make a move down to the 2.618, which would line up with the 200 MA, you're looking at 81.43 to 81.28. So if you want to use 75 or 80 as a lower strike on some kind of a put spread or a put spread overwrite to get long down there, I'm cool. I think between 75 and 85 generally is probably a decent area to own the stock for a bounce. I do believe though, if we can get over the 104.82 and clear high of day at 108.81, we're probably looking at 115s to 118s as an upper range. So it's just a matter of which one clears first. As far as Apple goes, actually closed green. They had had that pullback after the quarter and then it rallied. 
It's stalling out below the 50 MA, so 213.77. I'm always most comfortable owning Apple when it's over the 20 MA, which is at 221.57. If it were to continue to pull back, I think the 187 area to 180s is a good lower strike as a hedge. And if you wanna sell some upside calls somewhere in the 250s or even 240s, a longer dated, I'm good with that as a way to pay for that put spread. I think Apple is basically gonna be an iPhone story come September, so once you get through August, it probably reignites for September. Bitcoin, of course, the ultimate risk on, risk off arbiter. It's actually acting okay. It's up pretty nicely in the after hours, still holding the 200 MA, so if you wanna be long against 55,207, that makes some sense to me. I do think it runs into some resistance. If it does fill the gap, to 62,945 to 63,429, which is of course the 20 MA. We thought it was okay to be long as long as it was above 64,005. Anything below there, we were bearish. It pulled back, it got the channel low. It actually had a look below and fail of the 53,635 reference low from 75. Anything that remains above there on the 200 MA, I think it's still sideways to higher, but be a little bit careful. As far as interest rates go, that bad auction definitely had some ramifications in terms of TLT. It pulled back here to the 61A to the range at 95.52, that of course being the retracement, not the pullback level. And it is holding the top side of the channel here. I think if it gets back up over 96.46, it's probably along to 97. 74. If it does keep pulling back, I think it could make its way mid-range, maybe all the way down to 93, 96. I'd be a buyer if it hit 50 MA zone at 93, 11. You have a stacking of MAs of the 100 MA, 200 MA, and 50 MA between 92.02 and 93.11. So my guess is that area holds. And if you want to do some kind of a put ratio playing for a move down there, I'm good with that. I like using something sub 90 as your lower strike though. Speaking of super micro, uh, anything below 529.5 to me is bearish, above probably could fill in the gap at 616.94. I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing with a three handle ultimately, that's really where the big volume picks up. There is a bit of a node around 458, but I would stay away from this one. I'm not a big fan when you miss multiple quarters. ASML did get the dump, it did get the check back to the breakout at 774.55. The bounce has been kind of weak. It didn't fully fill the gap to 883.71. If I had my choice, I'd probably pick ASML over SMCI, but I would take NVIDIA over both of them any day of the week and twice on Sunday. Meta acting very well, but today wasn't able to clear and hold the channel. I think this is gonna be choppy for a while. If you wanna do some iron condor or strangle play in this, I'm good with it. I think it's gotta basically hold the 50 MA, or I should say get back up over the 50 MA at 488.92 and 492.73, which is the 50% fib of the range, of course, from 78 down to 725. Generally, I like to be long over the 50% fib or neutral or short below it. Generally speaking, up opens are problematic when you have a down tape. A lot is gonna hinge on the, what's going on in Japan. As long as Japan is rallying, as long as interest rates here are stable, it's okay. Right now, the fear is recession. So what happens with recession fears is that interest rates start pulling back hard. That's of course good for PE multiple premiums down the line, assuming earnings don't fall apart and we actually get a recession. But in the initial spike, people do get worried. I think the data is mixed. I think it's a little bit of an early call here for a recession, but it is clear to me that things are slowing. So just a slowdown, just rate of change wise, has people pulling some money off the table and seasonality is definitely kicking in here. Usually August is a bit of a crapshoot, but tends to be a little weak. September into October is often weak and we do have the election coming up. So we could be weak until early November post election. Usually the last couple of years, we've been bottoming around Halloween. So I do think if you wanna put on some kind of really big trades here, it's not really that advisable. I think just play for singles and doubles and don't go for the home runs. Smaller size, good trade entry, and definitely using stops. When what should happen doesn't happen, don't ignore that. That's it.